Hello, and welcome to the Small Business Tax Savings Podcast, powered by Jetro and Associates. Get ready for another action-packed episode from our team that will help you save time, taxes, and keep more money in your pocket. Hello, small business owners, and thank you for tuning in to the Small Business Tax Savings Podcast. My name is Mike Jezoshek, and I'm a CPA and founder over at Jetro, and today we have a very special episode for you. We have a special guest on today to talk about credit card processing for your business. Let's get started. All right. So as a guest on today's webinar, we have Greg Rosen from Heartland uh, Payment Systems. And Greg, if you just want to kind of start out by explaining uh, a little bit about yourself, your company, and then uh, you know, we'll kind of dig deeper into more questions. Sure. Appreciate that, Mike. Um, yeah. So my name is Greg Rosen. Uh, I live in the Appleton area. Um, grew up here, been in Wisconsin pretty much my whole life. Um, a UW alum, so um, love watching the Badgers. Big Packer fan, um, becoming more of a Brewers fan. So, uh, <laughs> but yeah, so big sports guy. Uh, and then uh, as far as Heartland, um, I actually started here almost two years ago. Um, started out as a relationship manager, where out uh, selling to uh, customers and. Businesses are credit card processing services, HR and payroll, our point of sale, and then also we have e-commerce and um, gift and loyalty type programs as well. So we do have quite a bit of different products that we offer. Um, and then from when I from there, in about three months into the job, I was promoted to a territory manager. And then now, as of November 1st, I'm a division manager in the Appleton area recruiting, you know, um, very uh, good top talent to come on board in and work uh, for Heartland. So it's been awesome. an amazing, amazing run for these two years and just looking forward to uh, what my next steps in my career will be and what I can do to help, uh, you know, customers of yours and any of any other businesses. Yeah, no, that's awesome. And, you know, I think uh, in my previous, before I started the accounting firm, uh, I dealt a lot in merchant processing in the industry that I was in. And it was always a place where there's a lot of confusion and, uh, you know, can be complex setting up these systems. So I thought that's why it'd be great to have you on, on a podcast episode, because there's a lot of information that people don't understand or don't know. And at least when we first started in, you know, in the previous previous life, we would just get letters in the mail that say, okay, you know, here's merchant processing. We call them up and that's the system we kind of got stuck with. Uh, we, we didn't really know what we were doing. So I think it's good to give, uh, it's, it's going to be a good episode for those that are learning to, that want to know more about merchant processing. Um, and so that they know what they're getting themselves into. If they are in already in a contract, what might be, um, you know, kind of wrong or where they're, where they might be spending more money than necessary. So before we get into kind of the, the actual main interview and questions part, I just want to do uh, a quick fire question. So I'm going to ask just five questions that give the audience a little bit more, better idea about kind of you personally um, and, and what you do for Heartland. So uh, first question is, why do you do what you do uh, there at Heartland? So the reason um, that I joined Heartland or kind of in, enjoy what I do is I love to help people. Um, I really look at this as an education process. You talked about how uh, complex this can be and how complex a lot of the companies make it out to be. Um, that is where Heartland is so much different. And we really, and what I really try to accomplish is make sure that the customer and can understand what they're actually buying and what they're mm -hmm. actually getting from Heartland. And so, it's more of an educational process that I go through with you um, because we actually sit down with you for the most part um, as long as you're within a reasonable couple hours, two or three hours driving distance. We'll actually come sit down with you at your place of business and learn about your business to make it easier for you uh, to understand what's actually going on with your merchant services or your credit card process. Okay. That's what really is so neat about what we're able to do is it's so different than every other company out there. That's why I love working here. Makes sense. And you mentioned kind of sitting down with uh, business owners. And the one thing that I liked about Heartland and especially with our client base being all around the country is that you guys are not, you don't necessarily have to be um, 
you know, sit down face to face because you guys can work virtually with clients as, as well, right? Yes. I mean, virtually is uh, another great way of doing it. Um, I have a Zoom account, which is a video conferencing um, kind of line, and uh, it allows us to, to see each other face to face and kind of walk through it. So um, it's always good to, to talk to somebody and be able to see, to make, you know, body language is important and make sure that they're understanding um, what you're saying. Because a lot of times, like you said, this stuff can be complex if you make it complex. But yeah, virtually is a great way to do it. Uh, we actually have um, representatives for Heartland all over the country. So uh, it's, you know, we have boots on the ground essentially in 50 states. Um, but yeah, work, working virtually works just as easily as in person as well. So Awesome. Uh, next question. What's one ritual that helps you become better at what you do? Um, I think it's, you know, sticking to a cadence. Um, one of the biggest things and big things that I do is just try to keep the organization. Um, I have a dual screen and I'm looking at it and I have it color coded to different ideas of what, uh, if I'm running appointments with my uh, people or if I'm doing something for myself or personally or my kids, it's all color coded so I can glance at it and I know exactly what is going on during that time. So it really helps me stay focused and engaged and also top of what I need to do. So, yeah, that makes sense. And so, you know, kind of, Jumping onto that, you know, using the color code system, is there any app or system that you use to kind of stay in control of your workload? Is it something you just use on Excel or is there a specific app that you use personally for that type of stuff? Um, I, I really like the Google Calendar. I mean, it, I mean, I know a lot of people still like the old paper calendar, but with as much stuff as we get, it gets really jarbled in a, a paper calendar and changes. So I really like being able to look at something at a week's view in the Google Calendar, and everything from Heartland is gonna go on Google, so we everything syncs together really well. Um, kind of nice because I have a Google Pixel phone, so it all kind of just makes it very easy to work with uh, the system because it all kind of flows together. Yeah, that's super convenient. I was, uh, it took me a while to kind of adapt to Google Calendar, and now it's so nice because you can link it up with so many different apps. And you book up, someone books an appointment on my calendar, you know, one of my calendar apps, it automatically checks and books it on my calendar. So, you know, it's really kind of a, when you can tie everything together, it makes things a lot, a lot more simple. Exactly. Uh, what's one book, podcast, or blog you would recommend to business owners or anyone personally uh, and why? Um, I would say The Go-Giver um, is a book that uh, I read not too long ago. And it's just really talks about being, you know, helping others and all the things that helping others will help you in the long run. I think um, a lot of people think to be successful, um, they need to do everything themselves and, you know, only worry about themselves. But really, it's amazing when you can go out there and do something for somebody, how that come back to you in spades. Um, mm -hmm. But that's, that's really what, uh, you know, a good lesson to live by too, because if you're helping people and they're always going to then in return, feel that gratitude. And it, and it always seems like it comes back around when you least expect it. And it's usually something that's really helpful. And, um, and that's kind of how I work in my business too, is just really try to help. And so hopefully my customers will think of me when, somebody's bringing up something to do with the stuff that Heartland sells. And, and, and then that way, um, because I was able to help them, they'll think of me as a person to go to for those kind of things. So um, yeah. it was just a really impactful and just shows kind of to me what uh, it's all about in the world of sales. Yeah, that's interesting. I, I haven't read the book yet, but it's on my reading list because you're not the first person that's told me about, about that book. So um, finally, as we get started, as we go to kick off the kind of main interview and talk about it a little bit further, what's the main topic you're going to be focusing on uh, as we get started? Um, I think the main topic is just to, the understanding, um, try to give some ideas of the, you know, I think there's a lot of 
so to speak, uh, falsities about our industry. Um, rightly so, probably. Um, but try to just clarify some of the stuff that uh, people think about merchant processing when they hear that. Most people, uh, when they first hear that, they hate it. Uh, they don't want to deal with it. Mm -hmm. After us, I think they're very, you can talk to, you know, any of my customers, they love the fact that they found us and are working with us. So I think it's just that ability to help, you know, clarify what really merchant processing does and how it can help your business. Okay, awesome. Well, you know, let, let's kind of get started and diving in. I have a, a list of five questions that to ask you about merchant processing. Um, and then anything you have to add or additional items, feel free to chime in. But, uh, you know, merchant processing is, is really becoming such a big aspect in, in all businesses. It just seems like everything is trending away from cash. Um, people are, no one's running around with cash on them anymore. And that makes sense when you when you're running a business to if uh, if you want to make things convenient you, you're going to have to to utilize merchant processing. So I think if you look 15, 20 years ago, you might have a lot of shops and restaurants and bars that don't do any merchant processing. They're just cash only. But I think it's very very few and in between where you see that nowadays. So with that being said, everyone kind of moving to that merchant processing or at least needing to in order to fill the customer needs. What's the number one problem business owners you work with have or that you see face around merchant processing? Um, to be honest, the biggest problem I, I think that is out there is they can't read or don't understand their statement. Mm -hmm. And they think they're getting a rate or somebody told them that they're getting a rate. And if they actually looked at their statement and understood how it was printed and how it was laid out, that they understand that that rate they were told they're getting is actually not what they're actually getting. There's so many different models of pricing in uh, merchant processing that you can get into there, you know, that a lot of people get caught up in. And really what you really are looking for is somebody to come and explain that to you so they can see um, what's actually going on, what kind of platform you're on, and then be able to solve that issue for you. Uh, when somebody sees our statement for the first time, you can look at it. You actually can see where the fees are, what they are, and who are they going to, um, which is a very um, kind of different way of doing things than every other company out there. Mm -hmm. um, they don't really disclose what fees are what, and that's where – Heartland is, is so different and why we, we do things the way we do. It's all about integrity, honesty, and just being upfront with the client and helping them understand so that they can make an educated decision. Yeah, that, 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 that makes sense. And too, you know, I, we see clients merchant statements all the time. And it's, it's odd because every single one looks different. None of them are the same. And, they, and it is, it's almost like a puzzle to try to dig deep in there. Do you think that that's something that's in, done, done intentionally or they just use kind of archaic systems that just don't have good reporting? <laughs> no, it's, I, I truly think most of it's done intentionally. Um, they want to make it difficult for you to read so that you don't see where some of the fees are that are going to them. Um, we have a lot of people where we or fees that we point out that are junk fees um, that aren't really paying anything. They're just added extra fees that uh, you wouldn't know that they were added. They use random names for things. And um, some of the names are truly what are called interchange, which is actually what the cost of the card actually is. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's a wholesale price that everybody gets better if you're Home Depot or Target or or the mom and pa, you know, store on the corner. Everybody gets the same rate to start with, or they should, um, if they're getting interchange pricing. But not everybody gets interchange pricing. So that's even the first step of trying to look at somebody's statement just to understand what kind of pricing model they're getting. Um, mm -hmm. And that's where a lot of people don't even know when they're looking at their statement if they have interchange and whether or not that interchange is got extra fees in it or not too, because a lot of companies add on to that interchange rate and basically 
kind of fluff it up to add more fees into it. So there's so many ways in a statement to add things um, yep. that companies all use to their advantage. Interesting. So, you know, kind of with kind of bouncing off of that topic, when selecting a merchant processor, you know, what are some things that you'd recommend a business owner consider when they're looking for someone? Um, and what are some questions that they can ask just to make sure that they're working with a reputable company? Because yeah, as I kind of mentioned, there is so many people out there doing merchant processing. You get, you open a business, you get five letters in the mail from companies you've never even heard of. So how do you know, what are some questions that they should ask to know they're working with a reputable company? And what are some things that they can, should consider when, when, when getting merchant processing set up? You know, one thing I would always consider is with a merchant processing is, you know, do your research. I mean, there's a website, cardpaymentoptions.com. And you can actually go in and it reviews all the payment processors. Um, one thing I would say is if your payment, the person or the company that you're looking for on there is not on there, I would probably stay away from them. That probably a very recent startup or called independent sales organizations. And there's so there's thousands and thousands of independent sales organizations out there that sell for one of the big time processors, which are, you know, Heartland, Bankiv, WorldPay. Uh, Elevon, you know, First Data, some of these big companies that you actually see, but none of those other companies um, actually sell directly to the consumer. So they have to go through that third party. So those are the things that I would be asking um, your person when you get a, most of the time it's probably a phone call, to ask them where are they located? Um, you know, what kind of service are they going to provide to you? Uh, what are they going to do in the case of a, of a breach? Um, you know, we've all heard about um, Home Depot and Target's issues with getting, you know, the breaches. How are they protecting you? Um, you know, those are big things that a lot of people don't pay attention to. They don't think that because I'm a small or medium-sized business, that's going to be an issue. But because of Target and Home Depot, all the big companies have gone in and spent millions and millions of dollars on security and making sure that they're a hard target now. Well, guess who's the next person down on the list is the small and medium sized company because we don't think to pay attention to it as much. It makes it a lot easier to be a target. So, yeah. you know, those are probably the big things to me to watch for. Um, you also want to know, you know, how long have they been in business? Um, what processor do they actually process with? Um, because again, they're not the ones doing the processing for you, uh, which in turn makes it difficult sometimes to deal with the company as the people that you're calling aren't the ones actually processing your, your payments. Um, so those are kind of a few of the questions that I would want to dig into. Um, you know, you want to know if you're, what kind of pricing model are they setting you up on? Um, there's tiered, there's surcharge, there's, um, you know, interchange plus. So it just really depends on, you know, the company that you're going to and to what, you know, what the, what you could ask and what you should ask because there's a lot of misnomers out there about, you know, merchant services like we talked about and a lot of extra fees that can get involved because of these third parties and the middlemen that get in in the mix. So again, another great question would be, how many people are involved in this transaction from A to B? You know, mm -hmm. you know, if I if I work with you, where does my money go and how does it get to my bank account? And see if they can actually answer that. So those are kind of the big things um, too. And Obviously, you'd like, you know, for the most part, you'd like somebody local that if, or at least a person you can call, mm -hmm. uh, you know, that's one thing that we do that's quite different is, you know, most places, uh, the rep sells the account and is never seen again. Um, it's a very common practice, whereas with us, you you're always have your rep or at least the company because you work, we work directly for the company to call. So those are some good questions. and. 
I would say doing your research is probably one of the biggest things, not just taking the, the salesperson's word for it, that they're a great company. I mean, there are, we have the internet for a reason and it tells you a lot of information and you can find out a lot on um, different merchant services companies on that cardpaymentoptions.com. Yeah. So that, that website's cardpaymentoptions.com. Yes, correct. Okay. Awesome. Yeah. I think that's, uh, you know, it, it's nice to know you, there, there's so many fake review sites I see on you know, software or any, any type of product sometimes. So, uh, you know, you never know, okay, is this site an actual review site or is it, uh, you know, someone that's fake and just trying to promote a bad company or something. So um, that, that's good to know. Uh, and I think you kind of touched on this a little bit in that previous question, but, you know, what are some key points that make, you know, one merchant processing company different from another, if there is, if they are different? Yeah. No, I think the we all get money from A to B, right? And so it's there's different methods of getting that money from A to B. I think the biggest thing, and I've kind of talked about it, is First off, it's whether or not how many how many hands do you have in the pot, right? I mean, is it one company or do you have a bunch of middlemen jumping in that all have to get a slice of the pie? Because as we all can imagine, the more people involved in the transaction, the higher the cost to the end consumer becomes. So mm-hmm. that's probably the biggest one out there is in how we're all different. Um, second is what kind of service? Are you going to be provided? Have an 800 number. Um, where does that 800 number go? I mean, is it in the United States or are they outsourcing, um, you know, to other countries? Um, you know, be it, unfortunately, a lot of times, it's, it, if you are a restaurant or a bar and you're open at 12 o'clock at night, who are you going to call and where are you going to get sent to? Uh, that's a lot of big, a, a big deal to people. Um, most companies outsource Heartland actually has a service center in Jeffersonville, Indiana, open 24, seven, 365. So you always have access to a live person, no matter what time of day it is or what time of the year it is. So, um, it's a very, very, very nice thing from that standpoint. Um, and then I think also is the type of company that you're dealing with, are they upfront and honest with you? Um, you know, that's really where you, it's difficult to know, but that's where the research comes into play and just kind of seeing what kind of reviews are out there about them to understand the type of company they are. And really, like I said, in anything, you're always subject to the people you work with. And I think you got to make sure that the person that you're sitting, that's sitting in front of you or on the phone, um, that they know what they're talking about. Are they outsourcing it to other people to do your pricing? When you ask them questions that are able to answer them for you or get back to you. Mm -hmm. So I think it's sometimes we get so ingrained in rate. And yeah, we've talked a little bit about that too. But as we all know, rate is only as good as what somebody tells us it is. And then when it's on the paper, in three months, when none of us look at our statement anymore, after seeing it a couple times, what happens then is that you can never really tell what your rate is if you don't actually take a look at the statement. So, um, you know, I would think those are the the biggest thing. Um, I think security is another piece of it. Are you with a company that's paying attention to the security, or are you with going with a company that, you know, yeah, maybe they give you a low rate, but they don't spend any money on, uh, you know, the security of, of your data on your customers. data. So mm-hmm. very thing, if you're subject to a breach, um, you're on the hook for all those fines. So those are, you know, a few of the things as that I would say we differ quite greatly on. Yeah. I think that security piece is, is big. A lot of people just assume that's getting taken care of and it's really kind of hard to know a lot of that's, over the average person's head on you know, what needs to be done and how it gets done. So um, next question, can you share five quick hit things that small business owners should consider when thinking about their merchant processing? I'd say number one is, uh, you know, 
is a, what kind of company are you dealing with? Are you dealing with an independent sales organization or are you dealing with a direct processor? Um, number two, you know, what type of pricing program are they putting you on? Um, are you getting interchange plus or are you getting surcharge or tiered or some other sort of pricing model that's out there? Um, number three is the security piece that we just talked about is how are they planning to take care of you if something happens? Um, I'd say number four, you know, do they have, what kind of service center did they have available to you? And are they able to answer your call at any time of the day? Or are you subject to certain hours that are there available? And then lastly, you know, in, in kind of going with service is, is your rep going to be there to help you? Um, and when you have a question, who do you, you know, can you call them or are they kind of one of those people that don't have the answers? So those are, you know, really probably the five major things, um, you know, price being probably at the end there. I, I think if we all were, uh, in being number six or number seven, um, I think if we all were honest with ourselves we'd all want to just pay a fair rate for mm -hmm. a good product because we don't all, I mean, it's funny because we all want the lowest rate, right? But yet when it comes to a car, I don't see everybody out driving the, the cheapest car on the road. Yeah. So for whatever reason, we find value in things that have more, you know, you know, people like Bluetooth in their car. They like, you know, bells and whistles of of everything that's involved with the car, the backup camera. None of that's necessary, but we're all willing to pay a price for it. Mm -hmm. so I, it's interesting when people always bring up price as their major concern at the beginning. And what's, you know, I'll ask, I get that question a lot. What's my rate? Well, really, if you were thinking about it, you would want to know all those other things about a company first and make sure they're a good company and that they're going to get you from your money from A to B in the best manner possible and the most value that you can get out of that. So um, I always, I always find that question to be, you know, when people ask me about rates, I always find it to be very interesting because most of the time when you hear that, those are people that have, been talked to and been told they have a very low rate and will tell me they have a very low rate and then they meet with me and they actually have a very high rate. So mm -hmm. it's just an interesting uh, dynamic out there that evolves in credit card processing that people need to be aware of. So really, if you really thought about it, everybody wants the value. The price is, is probably secondary in most cases, um, just like your business. People want their, you know, taxes done correctly. You know, we can all go find the cheapest accountant, right? But that yes. doesn't mean they're going to do it right. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, and I think that's the same thing in credit card processing is you can all go find the lowest rate, the lowest this and the lowest that. But the problem is, do you know that your money is going to be there tomorrow, the next day for sure? Is that business really functioning as in your best interest or are they functioning in their best interest so that would be probably my biggest those five things i said and then just the some some sort of caveat to watch out for when we're all ingrained to speak price in this industry mm -hmm. when really i think if everybody was being honest they'd love it if their price stayed the same and they got a great product out of it yeah. Well, and even honest pricing. So, you know, a, yeah. a rate's a rate's great, but you don't really know, okay, what's added on to that rate or anything. So yeah, that's another piece. Um, just to kind of wrap things up, uh, you know, I want to talk about smaller businesses and there's obviously a lot of merchant processing options that are super easy to get started with. They have flat percentages like a square or a stripe. Um, you know, when is, Square or Stripe a good option for a small business owner, and what point and at what point does it make sense for that small business owner to maybe look for a robust, a little bit more robust or flexible option? You know, Square is is great for and what it was originally designed for was you know, really the 
you know, person at the flea market that needed a way to take payment, right? I mean, that was doing very little processing, so to speak, because as we all know, um, or maybe, or as we all don't know, but really credit card processing is based on volume. Um, Heartland is a volume-based company and we price based on volume. So the more volume you do, the better rate you're going to get. So it's, it's the company's a small business that's doing, you know, five, 10, 15 grand a year. That's really great for Square and Stripe and those kind of things. Anybody that's doing, you know, in that starts getting in that to the 40, 50, $60,000 a year in processing credit cards a year is really going to need some more robust systems. Um, you know, you're going to want somebody that knows security. You're going to want to know, have somebody that is available 24 um, seven. You know, you're also going to want something that has that interchange rate that uh, you can, you can get to because Square is great for people that do low, low dollars. But as you do more dollars, actually rates become way better as you do more volume. So um, a 275 with Square, you know, if you're doing 100,000, 150,000, you probably should be more at the 2.5, depending, you know, let's say you're a restaurant. You know, if you're doing that kind of volume, you should actually be doing you know, a much better rate. So hmm. it's an interesting platform that they have. Um, but I can tell you that uh, Heartland has, you know, we, we actually have a mobile pay and everything else that, that they have in that world or that space. But we also have, you know, point of sale systems, cloud-based systems that can help out any business as well. So I really think it's, you know, those kind of, Companies are very good for the very small businesses. And I would never, you know, then there's a, there's a point at, you know, that I said, you know, that 50,000 marker that it becomes really good to get to a processor because now you're probably going to start growing and you're going to see that growth of credit cards in your business. And you're going to want somebody to take care of it. So, that's kind of what I would say to those kind of companies out there um, or as far as they're concerned is just, they're good for the, the very small. Awesome. Well, that's, that's kind of all the questions that I have for you. I think based on this conversation, there is even more that we can dig deeper into, you know, going into learning about the different pricing structures and, and how they work. So I think, you know, based on uh, the conversation we had today, I think a follow up down the road would be good to just dig now that people have a good over level, higher end understanding of merchant processing, dig a little bit deeper, deeper. But uh, Greg, can you let us know, uh, or our listeners know where they can be able to find you, maybe your uh, email and, and phone numbers in case anyone's interested in learning more from you? Yeah, so uh, you can reach me. Uh, my phone number is 920-257. 3080 and that's my cell phone number and then uh, my email address is greg at rosen r-o-s-e-n at e-hps.com awesome well greg thanks for tuning in today thanks for jumping on and um, like i said i'm sure we'll have you on as a repeat guest down the road sounds great appreciate it mike thanks Thanks for tuning in to this week's podcast episode. I hope you enjoyed our special guest. To continue the discussion, join our free Facebook group where we give away bookkeeping and tax information that others charge thousands for. To join our Facebook group, simply reach or search in Facebook for Small Business Tax Savings, and you will see that it's a group that you can join. I look forward to seeing you in there and continuing this discussion around merchant processing, tax, bookkeeping, whatever else might show up in your business. If you enjoy our weekly episodes, please leave a review on whatever platform that you listen to us on and share with other business owners. If there is a topic that you want us to touch on specifically, shoot me an email and we can bring it up in a future episode. Again, thanks for tuning in to another episode. I will see you next week. 
This has been another episode of the Small Business Tax Savings Podcast from the team at Jetro and Associates. If you have any questions, feel free to email them, tax at jetrotax.com. We have packages for small business owners starting at just $75 a month. If you enjoyed our podcast, please take the time out to give us a five-star review in iTunes or wherever you listen. This helps us to bring you useful tips to help you grow your small business. Thanks for listening and have a great day.